All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. Today, we're going to go ahead and continue. Last week, we had uh, the introduction to the new 350X in the shop. I'm going to put a new carb on here. What we've got, we've got a reconditioned factory 350X carburetor. We know who, you know who I got that from. I came from Curdy at 223 Cycles. He sent it to me. Definitely, you know, the go-to guy for your carburetors. It, you can go to his website. Got a full store there of all of his inventory. Click, click, click. He'll send it out to you the next day. Just the best service you're going to get. But what he's done here, I'm going to kind of show you some of the highlights of the, of the carburetor. I mean, they're basically jewelry at the point when he gets done with them. So you hate to get them dirty, but, you know, that's, that's kind of part of it. This machine came in, we got it running. The decompression system was just kind of all out of whack. It was real bare to, to kick over. Uh, we made that adjustment and it fired right up, but it's running pretty rough. It's not, it's not ideal. I want to go ahead and kind of start off. I've got the carburetor. We're going to go ahead and kind of start off right with it and just kind of show you the basics of what it takes to, to swap one of these out. It's really not that hard. It's, um, it's quite easy to do, really. Flat hedge Phillips screwdriver, 12 millimeter. Uh, socket and you know you're done it's always good to go through your machines and, and kind of make sure everything's right so that way if you can kind of have to, if you have to put them to the side and, and work on something else you know it's done and so I try to do that I try to do air filter try to do oil change try to service the machine the carburetor in this instance because I know this one's kind of running kind of rough gonna really have to take a, a hard look at that throttle cable the cable literally has two inches of travel in it. you push the throttle halfway it does nothing <laughs> you push it the rest of the way it starts to rev up so just little things to keep in mind now this machine does have somebody has drilled holes in the air box so we got an open element if you will practically practically and we've got exhaust on here so factory jetting is not going to work on this but we're going to start with factory jetting and then we'll pull it back off and rejet accordingly. So that being said, I wonder what jet it does need. I bet we're probably going to have to go up about four sizes. So if I don't film all of that, I'll put it in, you know, in editing. I'll tell you what I ended up doing. Uh, generally about four sizes from factory once you start experimenting with getting more air in and more air out of the engine. It's just a general rule, but you know if it's four sizes don't be don't be alarmed what i try to do is i try to order a couple of jets don't just order one jet go ahead and order you know five or six jets range up from where you're at when you are modifying your machine you are in essence putting more air in and getting more air out and the only way to offset that and to maintain your air fuel ratio is to put more fuel in. And the only way to put more fuel in is to have a larger jet. There are metered. Every carburetor manufacturer has their own system. Um, the rating system between like a Makuni and a, a Kian is not always the same. So be sure and know what jets you're getting. Most, you know, most of these carbs are, are Kenan carbs. And, uh, and so as long as you know that going in, those are the jets you want to order. You can find a link for them in the, in the description below. You can get them in sets, uh, which I found very easy. You only get one at each, each one, though, that way. Uh, but you can buy them in ranges. Be sure, if you have a Kian carburetor, you get Kian jets. If you have a Makuni carburetor, get Makuni jets because they're like Ford and Chevy. They just don't work. They're not interchangeable together. So let's get started. I'll show you this carburetor and uh show you how easy it is to swap one out so curdy's been so kind he's already he's labeled stuff he keeps me he keeps me looking good so we've got our drain lines here we got the little brackets for him this is just little things to make his not just you know it's just not mail order we've got an extended here uh fast idle screw i believe that's what it is or that's a yeah that's the extended fast idle screw and then this is the carburetor. I've already opened it up, so it actually comes packaged a little better than this. We've got his own custom side cover here. You see here, this is just going to be a factory replacement. I don't know what's in this machine. I don't even know. We're going to have to kind of take a look. I may have to get a cable. We'll see. That could be the problem. Someone may have used the wrong cable uh, on this machine, and maybe that's where there's so much travel in it. I'm hoping to find it. should just screw right into this one. But look how pretty that is, y'all. That is like jewelry. All right, let's see what this machine has.
All right, and just like that, we're all put back together. So uh, there's not a lot of gas in it, so let's put some gas in it. So uh, y'all see all these gas cans here. We just had a category four hurricane come through here and uh, <laughs> I had to stock up. There we go. It's the most awkward I think I've ever had to put gas in the freezer. All right, so we found our problem. I hope y'all caught that. On time lapse, the throttle is now fixed. There's no play in the throttle now. Hopefully you can see that. The problem was is the little 10 millimeter nut inside the housing was loose. Caused too much play in the throttle and then this could walk back and forth. Tighten that up. There's two fingers in there that, that you kind of jam up on either side of the bolt and that keeps it from being able to loosen up. Whoever was in there last didn't do that. So always make sure you hear that stop. That's kind of loose. I have to kind of fix that. Let's see. Things you notice. Things you notice. We may just be able to take that right off. You know, when we fired it up, I don't remember a rattle, but I bet that certainly made a, a lot of racket. Now, if you got to take one of these off, I'm pretty sure that I did have one, not on a 350X, but uh, the embossing, I think it was on a big red. For whatever reason, somebody ran the bolt in and uh, and it ran into the pipe. Well, it was on the 350X too. So if you got to take that out, just a word to the wise, put your bolt back in it. Just in case that bolt did protrude through if somebody made a mistake. You don't want to a nasty air leak there and I'm probably gonna look at maybe putting a clamp around this I just had a guy message me he thinks this this exhaust could be a Cobra and he could be very right it looks exactly like a Cobra the only thing I've noticed difference about it is it's a the body is aluminum and not steel and all the Cobras I have seen not that I've seen all of them but all the ones I have seen in the past have a steel body I've never seen an aluminum one so, let's see how we did. We're gonna take our carburetor. Let's see, choke should be up. We got it on. We're in neutral. Throttle comes all the way down. Ooh, we just went into gear there. Can't do that. Oh, that's so much easier to kick. Y'all know my camera's not going to hold up to this, and we don't have any brakes. So, ooh, soft seat. I think it's the first time I've sat on it. All right, let's see what we got. Throttle's good. That's real good. All right. These controls are all <laughs> set up for somebody else. The clutch is uh, way over there.
still can't get over that chrome Kickstarter. I like that. <laughs> Makes it different. You know, it's not like everybody else's. That is the one thing about these. You restore them like the factory. They look like everybody else's restored like the factory. You know what I mean? That's a, whew, that's crazy. Um, is it perfect? Is it finished? No, <laughs> it's not. It has no brakes. So next time y'all y'all see I'm fixing to ride something, somebody call me because I forgot when I made the pass past the camera that I don't have any rear brakes. So front brakes work pretty good. Thank you. Uh, thankfully they do. We need some clips on uh, you know for our our fork boots just. You know don't want to pile a bunch of money into it right out of the gate let's just enjoy for what it is i mean that's that's kind of you know what it is we, we find them we bring them back let's enjoy them for what they are anybody can anybody can 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 rebuild a brand new one you know you can buy a whole bunch of new parts and, and make it new again but there's nothing wrong with enjoying what it is and what it is is a running driving machine it, it needs brakes it's got to have brakes but Starts up, Purdy, you did a great job on that carburetor. The only adjustments you saw me do right there was with the idle. I, I didn't hear any popping, but uh, let's let's get some brakes and let's really get on it and make sure it didn't feel to run hot, it didn't tap or anything like that. So I don't know where we're at on jetting just yet. I'm gonna pull the plug, we'll kind of inspect that. But it feels very, very responsive. You know, it's it's funny they you know they, they say you know cars built on Wednesday are always a little better than the cars built on Monday because everybody's hung over. No offense. Or Friday, everybody's in a hurry to go out. So Wednesday is the car to beat. And so what they really are saying is you can line up five of these 350Xs and they can all be exactly the same, and you will find every one of them drives a little differently. Maybe not the characteristics of the handling, the power, throttle response. There's just little minute differences. Some cars are just built on Wednesday. That's all I can really say. I don't have an explanation for it because it's all the same parts. But it felt good. I did not expect the front end to come up on the trail. It was just second. You know, I, I gave it the beans. A lot of it probably had to do with those tires being flat. They just hooked and went, so they were pretty grippy. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. All right, well, there's another one in the books for now. Um, I'm gonna look and see if I can scratch up a master cylinder. We'll certainly put it on the track. It's not going anywhere. I do want to address the elephant in the room. It's a really, really nice elephant. Um, 
So a buddy of mine brought me his 350X and uh, we're gonna be doing some work on it. We did a, we did a will it run on it and we, we kind of found some things out, but it is, it's, it's a much nicer machine than I'm used to. So I'm having to go a little slower, you know, a little gloves and you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's a beautiful machine, but I'll just show it to you real quick. Don't, 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 don't drool too much, but it's another 85 350X. It's a, it's a beautiful machine. So it will be coming up in a future video. We're waiting on parts right now. Once we get those, um, you'll get a video on that machine, the tear, tear down, the will it run, why it didn't run, and what's it going to take to make it run. So that's coming up in future episodes. But this one, the Yard Sale 350, we're going to have to name it. We might have just named it the Yard Sale 350. Um, I like it. I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't think I was going to like it that much. I've really gotten spoiled by the two strokes and y'all know the channel the last five or six builds have been two strokes and uh, I haven't rode a four stroke in six months just hadn't done it that was fun that was fun we've got to do something with some leverage here though if you look close we've got a black lever on the left side real black somebody pretty this up sold it to the guy I got it from and, and then that's how I ended up with it at a yard sale but Levers don't match. This one's bent. The, the clutch, I'm pointing at it, but here's my hand. Sorry. The clutch is, is, is tweaked and it's, it's curled way down. You heard me. I don't know if you hear me on the microphone. We've got to pull these controls up and of course this one's bent pretty bad. Um, so maybe what we'll do, OE would have been aluminum. Well, she's warm, so just as a, as, as saying goodnight, let's see, let's see if it fires back up and how it runs. Uh, no choke. Just like that, carburetor's installed, we're ready to go. We found a major problem with this machine. The, the throttle cable was, was all jacked up. We fixed it without having to buy a cable. I love that. The throttle had just come loose. So if you've got a throttle that's real loose, go inside the main cable housing where, where the little armature is. Go in there and see if that's not your problem. I really thought this one was just a mile adjuster. Maybe it was the wrong cable for this carburetor, but it was the right cable. Um, and the cable was in good shape. It wasn't crimped or kinked or anything. So I wanted to go ahead and use it because it, it, there was no drag on it. I always test one. When you take a carb loose, you know, go ahead and run the cable back and forth. As long as you don't have any drag, you're good to go. There's really no point in replacing it. If it's frayed or got any kind of bind in it, please replace it. Don't, don't try it. It's not going to go away. It's not going to fix itself. But Curdy, outstanding work. Thank you again. Carb's great. Runs great. So if you need an original carb or you need an upgrade, be sure to check out Curdy. He'll hook you up over 223cycles.net. All right. There you go. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you in a couple days.